Bumblebee has definitely got the action elements that they should and would expect from a Transformers movie, but it has a whole lot of heart and discovery and humor. Oh, I'm, I'm good. Now I'm good, thanks. So first and foremost, thank you so much for being part of Arclight Stories. Oh, of course. So I'm just imagining this call you get. Hey, one of the most successful film franchises of all time, all directed by Michael Bay. Here's the torch, take it away. Yeah, it was, I was shocked to get the call to begin with, um, but the more I thought about it, the more sense it made for me because you know, having grown up in the 80s, I've known these characters, I've, I've known about these stories, I've loved these characters since I was a kid. And this movie created an opportunity for me to to try to make the Transformers story that I'd always wanted to see on the big screen. And to be able to tell a story about a character that I really cared about my whole life, I mean, it was a tremendous opportunity. Where's Optimus Prime? Most of your filmmaking experience has been in animation and stop motion in particular. How did that prepare you for your first live action film? You know, I think that there are a lot of the processes that are analogous to live action. Obviously, there's some that are different. I mean, stop motion is certainly slower and smaller. Um, but I think that a lot of the tools are the same. I mean, Bumblebee is an animated character, so bringing him to life in a believable way, I mean, that's just what I do. I, I breathe life into, into characters, you know, that don't have any of their own. That was relatively straightforward. But, you know, the live action aspect of it, I mean, that was pretty daunting. Uh, it's diving into the deep end. I was terrified, but I was excited for it. And I had a great crew and I had a great cast and, uh, and we all leaned on each other and, and we got through it. And I'm really happy with what we did. Talk to me about working with this filmmaker. So working with Travis, it was very interesting. He had such an incredible vision, and he had a way of articulating what he saw, uh, which was very helpful when it came down to talking to a tennis ball on a stick for three months. <laughs> um, so he was he was really incredible. Him and I had conversations, you know, from day one in terms of developing this girl and who she is and making everything feel as real as possible. He paid such attention to the detail. He made he made every scene feel important and as an actor you need that because you want to know where you're coming from and where you're going and Travis just always had the answer was was willing to put such heart into the story that I feel people can can really feel in this film what was the moment from this film that you if you think back right now oh. it gave you such a great rush oh my gosh so there was this one point where we both were driving Bumblebee and uh, you know there are some points where Bumblebee just takes charge and I'm not I'm in the driver's seat but he's driving and uh, in this case, he was driving, and we were flying down this hill, and we took a turn, and we didn't understand how fast we were going and how far we were gonna skid. And not only did all of this happen, John Cena was like maybe six inches from the car, and he did not move. George and I, our screams were 100% real, and John was just like standing there, so stoic, didn't move, it was incredible. Was the auditioning process grueling, or were you, did you know right away you got the job? Like, I'm not gonna lie, I got, I knew I got the part when I read the sides. There was like two scenes, it was like, it was Transformers and this other big movie, and I was going over for auditions, and I saw the, the other one, I was like, I'm not gonna get this. Really? <laughs> and then I got the Bumblebee one, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, this is mine. And That's I kinda awesome. went in, and then they brought in Travis, and then I got it, and I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. George mentioned, he said, I said, when did you know you had the part? And he's like, the second I got the sides. <laughs> well, he's not one f that's lacking for confidence, is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, but George was, I mean, George was great. Like, it's always a tricky thing to try to find someone who you, you feel like embodies what your vision of the, of the character is. And sometimes you don't know it until you see it. And with, with George, as soon as I saw his audition, it was like, ah, that's our guy, that's Memo. So he was right, he did have it. So you have no idea where he came from? No idea. When you think back to filming, what was like, what's a scene that really resonated with you? There are scenes, I guess it's, it's a real sort of testament to how real things actually felt because I was, I was there talking to this, this robot that is our movie. And I had scenes with George where even if the scene isn't necessarily emotional, there's always this underlying sort of inner conflict that this, that this girl has that, that all of the characters have. Um, and, and it's really just a whole sort of moment to moment discovery of how everyone can help each other get through it. What is one of the most meaningful reactions you've heard 
to the film so far. When I hear that people have been moved emotionally by the movie, that they're crying and they're surprised by the emotional reaction that they're having, that's what films that have stuck to my ribs over the years, that's what they've evoked in me, is kind of this, this sense of empathy and feeling deeply about this world that's been created on the screen. So if I've done something that's made someone else feel that way, I mean, that's as, that's as good a compliment as I can get.